Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Pro Show with Colin and Jacob. As always, I'm Colin. And I'm Jacob. And today, we're going to be continuing more of our pre-release review of Battle for Zendikar. Yes, and we're going to be covering Red now, which has been a very strong color to cast a couple sets, so let's see how it holds up. Yeah, let's jump right into this. Uh, we're going alphabetically, and follow along at home if you want, or don't. We don't care. Alright, first up we have Akum Firebird. This is cost two and two red, so that's a total of four for those keeping track. It is a 3-3 three, three creature. It's a phoenix. It is mythic rare, meaning you probably won't see this a lot uh, in your drafts, but it's good to know what it does. It's got flying, it's got haste, and it attacks each turn if available. Uh, it has to. It also has the landfall ability, which we've talked about as a refresher. Landfall is whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you get an effect. In this case, Akum Firebird, uh, you may pay 6 mana, 4 colorless, and 2 red, and you can return the Firebird from the graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah, so th we've seen quite a few Phoenixes uh, pretty recently, um, and some some people might be a little bit disappointed about the, on them, but as a theme, they're all very, very good and limited. And this is no exception. This is a bomb when you play it. Uh, three, four mana for three power haste flying is already amazing. Um, if you can recur this once, that's just amazing. That's amazing value right there. Um, this is an easy slam first pick. Uh, pushes you into red. Yeah, I think you said it there. I mean, this thing has to attack each turn if able. Um, you're probably not going to want to block with this thing because the idea is you're just hitting for three yes. with evasion with that flying every turn. The landfall ability, uh, you know, it's a little harder to activate than some of the other phoenixes we've seen in the past sets. It costs six, and you have to play a land in order to recur it. But, uh, by the same token, this thing cannot be killed. Uh, well, it can, but it will always come back, and that's uh, something that makes it reliable and consistent, and those are our two big things for drafting. You want cards that are reliable and consistent, and in this case, strong. So this will almost always just be turned sideways. Um, you can do some kind of tricks where you play it second main phase if you really want to block her or recur it second main phase, but 90% of the time this is going to be sideways. Uh, don't put this in your red decks that don't want things sideways. I don't know if that's going to be a thing. That's that's usually not a thing. Uh, yeah. Actually, you know what? This is actually still good even if you <laughs> have a bunch of walls because it's a three power flying haste, and that's always good in every uh, single deck. Pick this. Uh, the double red investment and the cost makes it a little harder to splash, so if you open this pack three and you're not in red, uh, you might have yeah. to pass it, but this card is nice. Yeah, it doesn't have very many implications or standard, so you're not going to be passing money, you're just going to be passing a bomb limited card. Yeah, so don't feel too bad. Alright, next card, also hailing from Akum, this is the Akum Hellkite. This costs 4 and 2 red, that's a total of 6. It's a 4-4 four, four dragon, this is a rare, again meaning, probably won't see it very often, but when you do, look out, because this thing is a 4-4 four, four flying. It's got the landfall ability that whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, it does 1 damage to target creature or player, and if that land is a mountain, Akum Hellkite deals 2 damage instead. Uh, first thoughts, 6 for 4-4 four, four flying, totally fine as a vanilla, uh, just a body. Uh, when you add the landfall ability, turning every land to a ping of 1 damage that you can choose where it goes, or if it's a mountain, doing a shock's worth of damage, I think this card will be very good and limited because even if you can't kill a creature by turn 7 when you're actually getting the landfall, Granted, you have seven lands. Uh, you can be doing those two to the face, and suddenly this card almost has six power because you're hitting for four in the air, plus the two from a land. Yeah, this is... I mean, yeah, he said six mana, four, four flying is unexciting, pretty vanilla, standard rate. Um, the upside is good. It's not great. Especially on turn seven, when you get to play an extra land, you're not going to be pinging anything for one and doing anything... Notable. Maybe you'll get an Eldrazi Scion here and there. Uh, so one damage to the player is also fine. It's not great. Two damage though is can be is, can be a pretty big deal. 
Um, so if you're and you're if you're playing limited, you have a bunch of mountains in your deck, specifically the card Mountain. Um, it's going to do two damage a fair amount of the time. Yeah. There's also interactions. You don't have to play your land in your first main phase. You can uh, make it seem like you don't have a land drop for the turn. Go into combat. Maybe something on the ground gets blocked by something bigger, but it does enough damage to put it within that two damage yeah. range. And then you play uh, land in your second main phase and uh, take out a valuable creature. This card, it's uh, it's good. It turns all your lands into damage spells. And that's nice. It is a little pricey, but still, if you open this, uh, it is a very good contender for first pick. And uh, uh, there, are, there are better bombs to take. Um, you know, some of the better removal is better than, than this card. Um, but this is still a card you can feel good about first picking. Yeah, I'd pick it highly. Um, it's going to go quick if you don't. But, you know, don't uh, don't force yourself into red if you aren't sure about it. This card won't make you go red, necessarily. Um, doesn't have a lot of synergy with what red's doing. I guess it does have the landfall synergy. Red has a lot of landfall this set. Um, but we'll we'll get into more of that later. So, Akum Halkite, go ahead and pick it, and moving on. What's our next card? Our next card is Akum Stonewaker. It's another so, Akum card. Yeah, I think this is the last of the... Uh, three card Akum cycle and the Thunder <laughs> card. This is a colorless and a red. This is a 2 1 human shaman. This card is uncommon, so you won't see it all that much, but you will see it. Uh, it has the landfall ability that whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay two colorless and a red. And if you do, you put a 3 1 red elemental creature token with trample and haste onto the battlefield that you must exile at the ne- beginning of the next end step. So. This card turns all land drops, if you pay three, into a lightning bolt on legs. Uh, and I think that's pretty darn good. Yeah, so this token is probably not getting blocked most of the time. Um, unless your opponent has some fourth toughness creature and they're not afraid of you. Um, but that's fine. Uh, it just If you're an aggressive red deck, you play this on turn two. Turn three, play, um, play land. Attack with a three power... Creature, you can this generates some card advantage. You, know, you don't have to play any spells after this. Um, you can save your you know your burn or your bigger creatures, your creature removal for later turns when they're more effective on their own. Uh, this is just this is a great aggressive card. Um, I would first pick this. Yeah, I mean putting a three power on the board potentially every turn uh, that can't easily be blocked because it has trample. Uh, that just makes this card really good. Uh, later in the game, you know, when there's like six or seven lands, both players are have a pretty solid board state, this card's going to drop off a little bit. You might not be wanting to pay the three to put a three power token into play. But if this is in your opening hand, you're going to feel really happy about it. And notably, you can't actually pay three mana twice to activate this twice. It's only a one-time thing. So if you have six lands on a battlefield... You can't just tap two of them and tap all of them and make two tokens. Yes, although if you have two Stone Wakers, yes. then you can use it once for each, but then you probably won anyway. Yeah, and Stone Waker <laughs> is you know, not a card that gets, it is good when you have two of them on a battlefield. Um, I think they're so powerful on their own that I'd still put multiples in my deck. Yeah, because you want to be able to draw this yeah. consistently. This will be a target for removal, and so you, you can just play another one. Yeah. And anything that necessitates removal that's a two-drop, you're very happy about. Because removal is usually, in fact, it pretty much always costs more than two at this point, and you are just trading well when someone has to pay five mana to kill your two-drop. So, good card. Uh, Again, if you see this card, if it gets passed to you midway through a pack, it's a very... Very good sign that red is open, because red players, yeah, probably any red deck is going to want this card. Well, the more aggro slanted red decks are going to want this card. You know, this card says landfall on it, Um, and it's certainly good in the landfall deck, but because you can't really trigger the landfall during combat and have it do anything relevant, it doesn't, it's not specifically for a landfall deck, it doesn't get better with the... uh, what was the instant they were talking about? That's great. Natural connection. Natural connection. Also, and also um, surge of growth or something yeah, like that. Yeah, <laughs> this doesn't get better with the, with the surge of growth. Um, 
it's still very, you know, it's still very good in any red deck, whether you're playing specifically landfall or not. Yeah, I, you know, you actually could, on their turn, uh, cheat out, well, not cheat out a land, but play a land at instant speed and make a 3-1 uh, blocker. Yeah. That's not irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. Um, th it's a fun card. You're going to want to play it, and you're going to feel the heat, the lava heat, when uh, someone else plays it against you. So uh, pick this one highly. It's a good card. Akum Stone Waker. Yes. All right. Up next, we have Barrage Tyrant. It's four colorless and a red. Total of five. It's a 5-3 Eldrazi creature. This is a rare. A lot of rares, the alphabetical top of red. Yeah. Um, this is a Devoid card. It has no color. It's a colorless card. I'm just reiterating that this set review in case anyone's skipping around. Uh, you can tap two colorless and a red, three, and then sacrifice another colorless creature. And Barrage Tyrant deals damage equal to that sacrifice creature's power to target creature or player. This is a really cool card. It's mm -hmm. a five for a five three. Already totally fine, especially in red. This is where you want to be. At least it's where you want your body to be. And the ability to sacrifice a creature that can't get through, that's already kind of dead on the board, and turn it into just damage to wherever you want to put it is really strong. Uh, they have to be colorless creatures, but this is Battle for Zendikar. There are a lot of colorless creatures, and many of them have really big power. So imagine a situation, you have a big Eldrazi out, let's say you have your 8-9 Eldrazi, and you attack them, and you put them down to seven or something, you don't actually finish the job, you don't want to let them untap, you can just sacrifice it afterwards, and you've essentially double-striked with it. This is this does hit player, which is a massive, massive advantage for this card. Yeah, it's not just creature removal, you're not just trading creatures, you are doing potentially huge damage to your opponent's face, and that is really powerful. Yeah, I. If anybody here has played with P and Kier Nalar from Origins, you know, I hate to make a comparison to it's probably the best card in that entire set in Limited. It, you've probably closed out games by just throwing the Thoppers and makes at your opponent and saying, okay, I just, now I win. Yeah. Um, and those this, did two damage. Those, max. Did, those did two damage. You know, this can do. You know, Colorless creatures get pretty big in this set, you know. This is, I'm sure everybody's expecting that. Um, this can do a, a lot of damage. Um, you know, in worst case scenario, it might blank some removal spells from your opponent, and the cast removal spell on your creature, and you say, okay, fine, I sacrifice it to take out your other creature. It's just very difficult for your opponent to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing is, you can respond to any kind of removal with this card. Even removal on Barrage Tyrant, you can just... Sa like, well, you have to have the land. Has to have sacrifice yeah, you, another colorless creature. You can't creature. sacrifice it, but they can never stop you from... Sac like, if they target it with removal, you sacrifice another creature, get the damage through. But they yes. cannot stop that from happening. Yeah, sacrificing is part of the uh, payment, so they can't respond to the sac... There's no sacrifice on the stack to respond to. Yeah, which makes this card uh, really, really good and limited. It makes it consistent, and it makes it reliable, and we love this card. Yes. So, it's great. Yeah, pick it highly, first pick it. Uh, you don't even really need to be in red to pick this card. It's only got one red in the cost, one red in the ability cost, and uh, if you've got a really strong colorless processor deck, throw this card in there, and suddenly your uh, processor or your ingesters that can't get through anymore just become shocks and bolts, and that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right, enough said. Enough said. All right, next card. Next, we have the Belligerent Whiptail. This is three and a red for a 4-2. This is a worm creature. It is a common, and it's got the landfall ability that whenever you play a land, it gets first strike until end of turn. Uh, this is your red four drop with four power. There's one in pretty much every set. It's pretty close to vanilla. The landfall giving it first strike obviously makes it uh, much stronger than it would be if it was, you know, 4 for a 4-3, which we see um, quite a bit in these limited sets. I don't know if I'm that excited about this card. It's certainly playable. You will put this in a red deck you're making, but it's not going to win you the game. It just, it's a solid creature. It's mediocre, and then when you landfall it, it's 
better than average. Yeah, so four power first strike is nice when it's attacking. Um, it doesn't. It has a landfall trigger, but it doesn't. Not a landfall trigger. It stacks well on multiples. In fact, it doesn't stack at all on multiples. Um, so it's not perfect for a landfall based deck. But it's it's a common. It's a pretty. It's four power first strike is pretty strong when it's attacking. Um, this will go in. I think all my red green landfall decks. Um, yeah. And you know probably also just other miscellaneous red aggressive decks. Uh, this is going to be. You know, part of the meat and potatoes of your aggressive red deck. It's not, you know, it's, it's a common, has common type power, but it, it works well. Yeah, one of, two of, generally, you're yeah. pretty happy to have this card as just kind of fodder in your deck. It's it's just a solid card, it'll perform well, it's definitely not first pickable, but it's one of the cards you're going to see halfway through the pack, and you're going to know that red's still open because... The red player hasn't taken the belligerent whip tails yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> Boiling Earth is the next card. It is a colorless and a red for a sorcery. It's a common. Uh, Boiling Earth deals one damage to each creature your opponents control, and it has Awaken. Uh, Awaken is a mechanic where if you cast a spell for its Awaken cost, in this case. Six colorless and a red, seven total. You also get to put four 1-1 one, one counters, or however much the awaken value is. This card is awakened for, so you put four 1-1 one, one counters on a target land you control, and it becomes a elemental creature with haste. Still a land, permanently. So, this card, it's two mana for basically killing all the Eldrazi Scions your opponent controls. That yeah. is what this card does. It does one damage each creature your opponents control. And then, uh, if you draw this super late, you probably don't want to hold on to this until you hit 7, because as a 7 drop, this isn't that exciting. But if you draw it late when you already have 7 mana open, then it might get value in the damage, but really you're just playing a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, so this is a card that's not very good for its normal cost, and also not very good for its awakened cost. Um, I would, you know, might be a cyborg card if your opponent's playing multiple Eldrazi Sky Spawners or a Comb Stone Stone Wiggers. Uh, you know, powerful one, uh, one toughness cards that which should be answered. But you know, there's just, I mean, if you want to kill all of their Scions for a card and two mana, that's they're probably gonna be okay with that. Um, they're not gonna have that many Scions on the battlefield at once. It's just, yeah, it just does, doesn't do enough for me. Yeah, and at sorcery speed, that makes any any card get significantly worse at sorcery speed. Or, yeah. if you want to consider sorcery speed the average, cards get way better with instant speed. So this is an exciting card. This is probably going to be near the end of the packs. Um, pick it up. Put one in your main deck if you're really strapped for playables. It could be your 22nd or 23rd card. Um, but mostly a sideboard card. And there are Cards with one toughness that are problematic. The Eldrazi Sky Spawn or your... Yeah, just, there, are, there are cards like that. I think yeah. the um, Mana Fixers in green, the little elves that tap for any color, they're one yeah. toughness. It's going to be... Yeah, this is just a sideboard card if your opponent's playing one of the few one toughness legitimate threats in the set. Yeah. Um, and it hits it hits all your creatures your opponent controls, flying and not flying. It's It's... Fine, it's okay, it's not great. Okay. I don't want to play it. Yeah. Next card, we've got Chasm Guide. This is three colorless and a red for a 3 2 creature. It is a goblin scout ally, ally. and ally, and it's uh, <laughs> an uncommon. It has the rally ability, and rally is whenever a creature with rally or another ally enters the battlefield, you get an effect. In this case, the rally. 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 The rally ability is whenever Chasm Guide or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. Yeah. Um, so let's just start out by evaluating this as a 3-2 haste or 4 mana. And that's not great. That's uh, that's probably over-costed. Um, not really what I want to be doing. Uh, the effect doesn't stack. It doesn't help any of your other creatures. Um, 
if you trigger rally, rally of course, <laughs> uh, later, um, it'll give haste to the one creature you play that turn. Um, which isn't really a, that which isn't really a great effect, um, especially if you you're probably if you're playing a rally deck, you're playing red. You're gonna have some early draw, early creatures. Um, you know, maybe you play you draw your two or three drop later, and yeah, you can get that haste, and that's mediocre. Um, this you know you can curve out with this four drop into a five drop very powerful ally that has haste as a dream. I don't think that's going to happen enough to make this a card I want to play in an ally deck. But having said that, it it's an ally that has it's an ally that has haste that can trigger other ally effects. This is going to be playable if you're in a wide, probably red white ally deck. Yeah. Um, not something that I would push me into an ally deck. What's something that I'm going to feel great about taking in an ally deck? But it's just, it's fine. Yeah, this is certainly playable in an ally deck. Outside of it, it's just a little. A little expensive for what it does, and if uh, even hitting multiple triggers, getting haste on a creature around turn five, there's going to be things that can block it. You're not going to be messing up combat too much. It certainly can. There are times when this card is going to be very nice for you, uh, but a lot of the time it's just not going to perform where you want it to. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to get blanked eventually, pretty, pretty soon. Yeah. Haste is not a very strong uh, end of the battlefield effect. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, in standard, this card will make allies, you know, when you bring a bunch of them back from the graveyard. When you rally the allies? Yeah, when you rally the allies, you're going to bring this card back, and all your brought back cards are going to have haste, and that's going to be pretty good. Um, so this this will see some play somewhere. Could. Very limited and limited, and who knows, in standard. Uh, also, I'd like to shout out, this is a female goblin. I think that's cool that Wizards is putting female goblins in without having to give them big old goblin titties oh, or, yeah. the, or makeup or like a pink bow. <laughs> it's just cool that goblins can be females and it's not a big yeah, deal. The only, the only hint of gender I see here is in a flavor text. Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. Yeah, Good job, Wizards. Fine. All right, moving on. We've got Crumble to Dust. This is three colorless and a red. It's a sorcery. It is an uncommon. It is devoid, meaning it has no color. Exile target non-basic land. Search its controller's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with the same name as that land, and exile those. Then they shuffle their library. This uh, does not seem like a card with limited in mind. No, this is made for um, older, f for I guess older formats that have strong lands, and for standard with main lands. It's not not playable and limited. Yeah, because the. For four mana, I mean, you're exiling the land. I guess that does make it ingestible or uh, processable. Yeah, that's, that's not powerful enough synergy for this card. Yeah, the if you're not hitting four non-basic lands with this, if you're not destroying someone's core concept of their deck with this card, you're probably not getting enough value. This this really isn't a limited playable card. Yeah, and even if your opponent does have. Uh, one of the rare man lands, and those are very strong cards. Yes, they certainly are. Um, you know, you're still, it's still just a four mana removal spell for a land. And yeah, there, and it's at sorcery speed. At there sorcery is, speed. Uh, we will see another land destruction at instant speed later, and we'll talk about that when we get there. But this card, Crumble to Dust, is an uncommon, which is sad because it's going to take up one of the uncommon slots, and those can be very powerful. Uh, but you're not going to pick this. You might sideboard it if you're really desperate and you're getting crushed by the Awakened deck. And, uh, this will be at the very end of the pack, always. You might accidentally end up with one of them, and if you end up with one of them, your opponent's playing four main lands. Congratulations. Yeah. Your opponent's going to be pissed. Yeah. And so will you. No one will be happy about it. <laughs> All right. Next, we have Dragon Master Utkast. It is a 1 red for a 1-1. One, one. This is a human shaman. This is a mythic rare. This is actually a reprint of a mythic rare from one of the first Zendikar blocks. I couldn't tell you which one. Uh, but it's a 1 for a 1-1. One, one. So you're thinking, probably not very good. However, at the beginning of your... Oh boy. It's a mythic rare, yeah. so it has something. Yeah. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control six or more lands, you put a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token with flying onto the battlefield. This card is good. 
Any card that puts creatures onto the battlefield every turn is going to be good. We talked about From Beyond a lot in our green set. is probably one of the best cards in Limited. Uh, this is another really good one. You need six lands to turn it on. You will not play this card before you get there because you don't want to get it killed just in the crossfire on your way up to the lands. But when you do get there, it's only a one drop, so you will have open mana for doing other things. 5-5 five, five, dragons with flying. Yes. That'll end the game real quick. Yeah, 5-5 five, five creatures with flying are usually pretty good. Um, and this set's not an exception to that. Yeah. Um, so this is a card that you don't want to play in turn 1. Uh, this says nothing on turn 1, does nothing on turn 2, 3, 4, or 5. Uh, this is really the card you... Yeah, I guess this is the card you want to play on turn 5... Uh, on, tur on turn 6, and then be able to trigger its... Uh, it's landfall ability. Well, um, it's not landfall, but it's yeah. land ability next, the very next turn. Yeah, you want to be able to untap with this card when you play it because you just paid one mana for a five-five dragon, uh, and I don't think it gets any better than that. It really doesn't. No, nope. one mana for a five-five flyer. Plus, you get a one-one on the ground. That's not nothing. It's a blocker if you it, need it's, it. It's it's nothing. It, okay. it's, you can't block with it because you're because <laughs> then you can't make a dragon. <laughs> Uh, no, this this is a really great card. It's mythic, so you'll probably never see it. If you do see it, uh, hopefully it'll be in your pack and not someone else's. And you can splash it. Yeah. You know, even though it has, it's a one drop, and you typically don't splash one drops. It's a one drop you want to play on turn five, or time, turn six. Yeah. This is really, really solid. It's cool. It makes dragons. This card's probably better than all the dragons in... All the uncommon and rare. I, I don't know. This is a great card. This is a really great card. Uh, be happy first picking it because it'll go in whatever deck you're going to make. No, oh, good. Okay. Enough said? Uh, enough said. All right. Fire Mantle Mage is the next card. It is two and a red. This is a 2-2 two -two human shaman ally. Uh, ally. And it's uh, an uncommon... <laughs> It's got the Rally ability. Mm -hmm. Whenever Fire Mantle Mage or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control gain Menace until end of turn. For those who need a refresher, Menace is a creature that cannot be blocked except by two or more creatures, which is a very nice ability. Uh, this card is good. This is, this is a very, very strong card. This is probably one of the best allies for the whole ally archetype. In limited, certainly. In limited, yeah. This is a, a finisher, and the thing is that's nice about it is it keeps being a finisher after you play it. Because on turn three, giving everything menace for that turn probably won't give you enough damage to win, because you'll probably only have a two drop on the field. Best case scenario, it'll get your, th what, 3-1 in, but... Yeah, oh, the 3-1, the yeah. core castigator. Yes. Yes. Uh, good for us for remembering that. <laughs> we are pros, after all. Yeah. Uh, this card is so good, because once it's on the field... It either has to soak up removal, which you're going to be pretty happy about. Well, you won't be happy, but you won't feel too bad because it's your three drop. It's not your big bomb that's coming. Uh, but every time you play an ally, suddenly everything gets so much harder to block because if they can only block, if they only have one creature out to block, it, everything becomes unblockable. And then if they have multiple creatures, they still have to block two to one. And then you get to choose how you deal your damage, and you you really just get a huge advantage in combat using this card. Yeah, the dream is playing this card. Um, tr is triggering this card with pump spells in your hand, as if that just makes it so there's no profitable blocks for your opponent. We're gonna see some uh, some pump spells later in red. There was a there was a couple in white, a couple in white, and tactic tactic tandem tandem Tandems, tactics. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It gives two things plus one plus two. Uh, this, yeah, this is one of the best allies in the set uh, for an ally deck. This is a first pick will card. This is something that will push me into red and into allies specifically. Uh, great. Yeah, this this card has such a high power level. Uh, do not underestimate this card. If you see this card as anything, like if it's third pick and you see this card, uh, go into allies because now you have fire mantle mage and the other people don't. Uh, if it's a if it's a third pick, then I look at my the other the people passing me, and I think one of them is screwed up. Um, I 
now I gotta really evaluate the signals to see if Red's actually open or if they just vastly underestimate this card. Yeah, I, I think it's possible. I know my when I first saw this card, I thought, "Oh, so what?" And then I realized Menace is just so friggin' good, and giving everything Menace is just sweet. This is such a good card. Pick this card, Fire Mental Mage. Thumbs up. Two thumbs way up. Yeah, two thumbs way up. Next card. Goblin Warpaint. Uh, from Modern Masters. Yes, also originally a Zendikar card. Because <laughs> Modern Masters doesn't print original cards. <laughs> yeah, so, if it's in Modern Masters, it has to be good, right? Uh, yeah, that's the rule. It wasn't even good in Modern Masters. I don't know why they printed it. It <laughs> did nothing. A, uh, it triggered Daybreak Hornet. Right. It was the only beneficial aura that could trigger Daybreak Hornet. Yes, and David, yeah, that, we're getting off topic here. Goblin War Paint, it's a colorless and a red. This is an enchant creature aura. This enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has haste. This card is the definition of meh. Um, yeah, this will make a creature uh, difficult to deal with for a turn, and then the next turn you're playing two frenzy most likely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, sorry. I mean, best, the best thing that could happen for this card is uh, you play a two drop. With Landfall. We'll see what in All a second. Right, let's, let's, you play a two-drop yeah. with Landfall, you have three men open, you play another land, it gets the Landfall trigger, then you play Goblin Warpaint on it, and suddenly you're swinging through with a lot. Yeah. That will happen maybe never out of all you time. You also have to make sure your opponent's completely tapped out for di before doing that also. Yeah, this card... <sighs> Enchant creatures, they have to be so good in order to make them playable. They have to be Knightly Valor. They have to leave another a different effect on the board besides... Uh, also, Consecrated by Blood was good in Origins. That's true. But Although I never I never well, actually saw it, really. Oh, I pulled some combos with that in Antuka Husk. Mm. That, was a, that was a nice one. Ah. Uh, but Goblin Warpaint is no Consecrated by Blood. It's no Knightly Valor. This is just a really unexciting card. Um, the art's cool. I think that's probably the best thing I can say about it. Yeah. Uh, don't pick this card if you do have to play it. It's not the end of the world. It's just so not what you want to be doing in red or in any color or in the game of magic. So, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Goblin Warpaint. We don't like you. It's not very good. Okay, moving on. We have Kozilex Sentinel. This is a colorless and a red. This is a 1-4 Eldrazi drone. It is a common. It's got Devoid. And whenever you cast a colorless spell, Kozilek's Sentinel gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Uh, this is kind of an interesting card. What do you think? Well, my red decks usually don't want one force. That's that's a, that's a, that's a big thing for me. Right, but this a, is deceptively a one four. This is an undercosted card. Um, it can be a two four on your turn pretty easily, uh, especially if you draft around it. Yeah, um, this is not going to be attacking very often. It's like it's got half of prowess, but even more limited because yeah. it's colorless spells. What only. deck actually wants this? Is this like some blue red control deck? Yeah, I guess it really there isn't a lot you can do with this, and you're not playing a lot of colorless spells a turn. You're not dropping like three really cheap ones down. You're usually just on curve playing the bigger one into the bigger one into the bigger one. So at most, you're getting. Plus one plus zero oh, until end of turn, and two mana for a one four. That sometimes a two four really isn't what you want to be doing. So, if so, if you actually think you can identify the deck where this is good, then by all means play as many copies as you can because this is a card that is very undercosted for its power toughness. Um, has a good effect that stacks in multiples. I just don't think it's synergized with anything I've seen. So far, in red, um, in this set. Yeah, and we could be totally wrong. This card could yes. end up being uh, quite a powerhouse. Yes. It's not a kiln fiend that was around in the original Zendikar. card. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it got I think plus two, plus zero, or maybe even plus three, plus zero. Um, and cards like that can they can get through because they make combat really tricky if you're holding up instants. And there are colorless instants in this set, so you can do some kind of clever things with this card. But plus one plus zero isn't huge, and I just don't think you're going to have enough spells in your hand to really consistently get this guy doing good stuff. And 
we said it before, we'll say it again, consistency is really important in limited formats, and this card is certainly not consistent. Yeah, if, that, if that symbol up at the top was a swamp instead of a mountain, uh, this would be a very, very strong card. Yeah. I think. This is... Yeah. Uh, if, yeah, you... Block, uh, four toughness blocker, not really what you want to be doing. Yeah, um, this... I think we'll see some... Pretty brilliant players make good use of this card, perhaps, but uh, yeah. for simple pros like Jacob and myself, I don't think we'll be uh, even trying to experiment with this one in draft. We're going to be going with the safer picks. We're going to yeah. be going with our Akum Lava Mancers or whatever it was. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is like this is a pretty underclass body. Now, this discussion has inspired me to try to get together at least once some blue red control deck that plays close like Sentinel. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, if you can do it, all power to you. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some of the... I'm looking forward to yes. one two with that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here we go. Lava Step Raider is the next card. It is one red for a 1-2. Usually not... Well, I guess that's more common in red these days. Uh, one for a 1-2. This is a Goblin Warrior. It is a common and has the ability for two colorless and a red... As many times as you want, you can tap that, and Lava Step Raider gets plus two plus zero oh until end of turn each time you do that. This is a bad card. Yep. Um, you know, even if even if you do have a survive till turn six, you're able to pump it twice, make it a five two. Your opponent's probably gonna be able to trade for it, and then you sank six mana to trade. Yeah. Up, but still. Um, and also, this card, you know, turn two. If you play this turn one, on turn two you're still only hitting for one because you won't have enough mana to pump it. Uh, plus you'll also probably want to play a two drop or a yeah. three drop anyway. This is going to interfere with your aggressive curve because pumping this is going to be much worse than playing almost any three drop in the set. Yeah. Um, it almost seems like a late game defensive card, like you leave it up and you leave up mana so you can block things and trade up, but and that's not what you want to do in Nobody's going to want to trade with your Lava Separator. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is we're getting to very fringe possibilities. This is a bad card. Don't yeah. play it. Don't play it. Sorry, Goblin. I keep apologizing to all these Goblin cards. You know what? Screw you, Goblin cards. I'm just evaluating you. You're bad. Please stay bad. Yeah, stay bad. Next card is certainly... Not bad. This is the McKindy Slide Runner. Colorless and a red. It makes it a two drop already. Should be exciting. This is a 2 1 beast creature. It is common. It has trample. And it has the landfall ability. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, McKindy Slide Runner gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Wow, wow, wow. And this is another one of the. Cards that you want making up the majority of your red green landfall decks. Um, pumping this once, it's a three two trample for a two. That's great. Pumping this twice is now a four three trample. Four two. Four for two mana. I didn't it's... mean four slash two. Yes, four two four <laughs> two mana. <laughs> I had to read the card again there. I'm like, wait, no. I'm... Anyway, yeah, this is a. Uh, yeah, if you have one of the combat tracks that puts another land in the battlefield, it's now 4-3 Trample. That's almost certainly going to eat what's ever blocking it and, and do some more damage. Through, yep. um, this is, yeah. This get, is... get a pack of these, you know, the Snarling, Snarling, Snarling Gnarled, the Belligerent Whiptails. Scythe have, Leopard. Scythe Leopard. You have a pretty good landfall deck going with just those. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people see Battle for Zender card, they think, oh, this is going to be really slow format where you're dropping a bunch of 8-drops. Cards like these, cards like Eldrazi Sky Spawners, they show that uh, you're going to have to really have your shit together if you're planning on dropping an 8-drop, because they're going to be aggro decks, like the Landfall deck, like the Processor deck, that can come online pretty fast and just beat you down. There is almost nothing that can handle a McKinsey Slide Runner, except for that uh, white wall we saw, the 0-6 for 2. Mm -hmm. That's your best bet against this card. Uh, and if that's your best bet against this card, that means this card's really good, because anything against it is just going to get crushed. It's a common, so you're going to see multiples of these in a deck. Um, 
It's just so good. It is so good. If you see these cards, it means red is open. You should be drafting every single one you can if you think you're going landfall. I would you even go so far as to first pick this if there was no super bomb rare? Okay. So I'd go, I'd say I'd pick bomb first, bomb rare first. If there's no bomb rare, I'd be looking at some of the, looking for some of the premium removal. I'd still pick pre, uh, premium common removal over this. But yeah, um, if I'm just looking, if there's no equivalent to fiery impulse or magic origins in this, in a pack that I'm looking at, um, this is going to be one of the better common creatures you can have in a, in a given booster pack, and probably not going to be happy first picking it, but it's first it, it's you can. Yeah. Um, this is a card that does damage for you early, and it can be a finisher, because Trample just makes a card so good. So, so good. Uh, Surge of Growth, I think, is the green card. Gives plus two, plus two, and you get a landfall trigger out of it if you have a card land in your hand. I think it's actually Swell of Growth. Swell of Growth, yes. Yeah. That is the correct name. Uh, yeah, that would... Just a swell of growth on your turn. You have two landfall triggers. Plus two, plus two. This card becomes a six-five trample. All for the two mana playing that card. So this is a really good card. McKinney Slide Runner. Your landfall deck is going to be this card. Snarling Narlid. Scythe Leopard. Good, good stuff. And then just keep on pumping those because they're going to get big. Yeah. Next, Next what? card, we have the Molten Nursery. It's just Molten Nursery. I said the, but it's Molten Nursery. Two and a red. This is an enchantment. It is uncommon. It's devoid. Whenever you cast a colorless spell, a Molten Nursery deals one damage to target creature or player. Uh, so this is unplayable. This is just, this is bad. Yeah. Um, so this doesn't do anything when you first play it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't trigger itself or anything. It just, you tap out and you do literally nothing. Um, you know, maybe you can cast, just keep on casting color of spells. Maybe this racks up, you know, three or four damage over the course of the rest of the game. But for three mana... For, for three mana, I'd rather have a three-drop creature. I'd rather have a two-drop creature. Um, yeah. This is, yeah, this is not... I mean, the very next card we're going to see does this effect, but better. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, it's different, but... Mold Nursery. Yes. You can um, say that about you can say of any card that that does damage. Yes. It's any card that does damage is a multi nursery effect, but better. Yeah. Um don't don't pick this card. I mean someone somewhere will pick this card and it'll end up actually doing well for them once and they'll probably get an unnatural attachment to it and they'll take the card home and put it in a little shrine and figure out some legal way to marry it and it's just going to be bad news. You don't want to be that guy. Don't pick this card. Agreed. All right. Next card, we have uh, Nettle Drone. Nettle Drone. It's a two colorless, one red. This is a 3-1 creature, Eldrazi Drone. It's common. It's devoid. Tap Nettle Drone. Deals one damage to each opponent. And whenever you cast a colorless spell, untap Nettle Drone. Uh, so... Even though it's three power, one toughness, this nine card is going to be attacking very often. Um, it has nothing protected from Eldrazi Scions. It'll trade down, I'd say, most of the time it's attacking. This is not a Dead Bridge Shaman from Origins where you can attack with it and have a nice little two for one effect. This is a card is going to sit back and block, which is what it wants to do because it's just going to be pinging your opponent. Um, if you have a lot of colorless spells, then you know, maybe this synergizes with the Kozlex Sentinel. They need some kind of defensive colorless deck that's been in being made here. I don't really I don't really see it, but uh it's pretty mediocre. Yeah, and if you are blocking with this, you're trading with a three toughness or less creature, uh declare blockers and then tap this to do a damage before it dies. It's just something that some people might overlook. It's just a way to get another damage in and that's how you win magic games. This three power blocker is gonna be fine against the more aggressive strategies. Sideboard this out if your opponent's playing a bunch of green ramp. Mm -hmm. And the one toughness makes it a little... It just makes it pretty fragile. It's a three drop. This might not be what you want to do with a three drop. I'd say one of in a deck. Not an aggro deck, though. Well, this is this uh, is a below replacement level card that will find its way... That could find its way into basically any deck playing red. Um... It's not, no, not something that you want to be playing. No, 
the power level just isn't there. Uh, it's under yeah. 9,000. Or maybe it's, it's way under 9,000. Um, uh, maybe there's a Carlos thing going on. Uh, I don't see it happening. There's a Carlos deck. This is obviously a lot better in a Carlos theme deck. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's enough pushing, like, oh, pure colorless. Like, your Eldrazi's are all colorless, but there's no real reward except for processor and jester relationships. This card basically just says whenever you play half of the cards that are in this format, untap it. So that's that's fine. It's fine. It's not great. It's okay. Uh, uh, don't replacement. Hopefully. Yeah, don't pick this card highly. Uh, one of in a deck is fine as your twenty first card, but yeah, not great. All right. What do you have next? Next, we have Ondu Champion. This is two colorless, two red. It's a four three Minotaur warrior ally. Ally. <laughs> it is a common. Uh, it has rally that whenever. Onto champion or another ally enters the battlefield under your control. Creatures you control gain trample until end of turn. This is, uh, was it Fire Mantle Mage was the one that gave them all menace? Yep. This is very similar. This is a finisher type ally. Giving everything trample means that you get very good. If you just turn everything sideways, you're going to get some damage in. Uh, if this triggers multiple times, not on the same turn, obviously, because Trample doesn't stack, but multiple turns, this is pretty darn good. And we talked about it, 4 for a 4 3 is kind of like the vanilla body in red. It's what they've been getting. It's their Yetis or whatever. And uh, this is a, this is just a Sound Prowler. Uh, 2 red red for 4 3. And then the upside is out. Uh, that was, okay, so Sound Prowler was always. Pretty uh, a card you wanted in your in your decks in uh, dragons and origins and cons, or yeah, they had sky record giant, sky, sky record giant and origins. Yeah. <laughs> they they really like these uh, yeti effects, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but the yeah, the upside is actually pretty strong. Um, if you can ever trigger this again, is now champion is a four three trampler, and you when it enters the battlefield, it, yeah, it's probably if. It's a uh, on if you're it's on curve then it's not going to be a huge effect. You probably have three power creatures, two power creatures out. Um, but if you play it late and you already have another big ally out there, it helps that. Be sure it is once ever again. It's a big deal. I think this is uh, just a very good card for the ally deck. Yeah, and it's a common, so you'll see a couple. Uh, something to note: the double red investment in the cost makes it a little trickier because allies are going to want to be playing maybe three colors, possibly. Um, two colors is always consistent. I think if you do have a two color ally deck, then red white's where you want to be. Yeah. Uh, so this is totally doable in a red white ally deck. Yeah. Um, Andu Champion is a nice card. Go ahead and feel good picking it for your ally deck. Even if you're not in the ally deck, four 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 three has been the standard vanilla red body that we've been getting. So even if it doesn't have huge synergy. Just playing it gives all your creatures trample until end of turn. Yes, these uh, these Yeti effects, these Yeti cards have always been slightly above replacement level uh, in the past couple sets. Yeah, and this is just a Yeti with upside. Yep. So, uh, cool. Pick it. Not highly, but pick it. Because it's common. There's probably going to be better things to pick at the start of a pack, but a couple cards in see an Andu champion, you'll be pretty darn happy to pick it up because having one or two in your deck is going to be nice. Yep. Next card. We've got Outnumber. This is one red. This is a common instant. Outnumber deals damage to target creature equal to the number of creatures you control. So this is a a one-mana removal spell in instant. Um, So you can kind of treat, when you evaluate this, kind of treat it as an X spell. Uh, what's what number does X need to be before it's good? Um, you have X is one. No, this is just a bad card. Mm-hmm. You have X is two. All of a sudden, this is fire impulse. Mm-hmm. So you really only need to have two creatures on the battlefield before this is playable, uh, not, and you'll be happy to play. So it. not even just playable, but fire impulse was probably better in Origins than it would be in this set. But still, this is a very good removal spell. Mm-hmm. And if you ever get to three or four, this is just this is amazing. This is yeah, it, one yeah. mana for doing. 
four damage to a creature is that's superb. That is better than a lightning bolt, and lightning bolt is considered by many to be a very good card. This does not hit players. Doesn't hit players. <laughs> this would be insane hitting players, but if this hit players, it would be mythic rare, and also it would never be printed. Yes, and also, <laughs> it would be banned in every format. Yes. Um, this is a really good card. It's instant speed, and we weren't given a lot of instant speed spells to work with in this set, and Outnumber is one of the few... Um, Pick it really highly. Removal is so important in draft settings because you're gonna have to. Everyone's gonna have bombs. You need to be able to deal with them. Outnumber is a pretty darn good way to deal with a bomb. It can be useful early when there's few creatures on the board and they play something that's not very strong. It can be good later when you have a pretty big board state set up and you need to get around a really tall creature. Uh, this is a good card. Draft. Two or three of them. I'll, I'll take as many as I can. Yeah, get. take as many as you can. Well, if I, I would cap out <laughs> around. I'd cap out around maybe you know fifteen or so. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, this is they say just premium removal. This is first pickable. Yeah, um, definitely. One you, don't, you don't need to be outnumbering your opponent too. This is perfectly good with with two creatures. Yeah, this is a nice card. This is a very very nice card. Outnumber yes. is premium removal. We'll call it here. Right here, outnumber right is premium removal. First pickable. Next card, processor assault. Processor assault. It's kind of a weird name, considering all the processors we have. But this is processor assault. It is uh, one and a red, a total of two. It's a sorcery. It's uncommon. It's devoid. As an additional cost to cast processor, put a card an opponent owns from exile into that player's graveyard. That is the process effect. All processors, and I guess processor spells, mm -hmm. have the effect of moving something from exile to graveyard. So, process result, you pay two, you process something, and you deal five damage to target creature. Yes, yeah, so this is a very powerful effect if you have anything in exile. Mm -hmm. um, red doesn't have any... In just creatures, no, it doesn't. There's, I there, I believe there were a couple ways to um, trigger exile to exile cards in red. Um, just not very many. This is straight. This is a synergy card. Um, if you're already in, you know, blue or black, and you have the ingest creatures, and you see this, this is going to be great in your deck. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're in red. Pure red, and you, and you don't really know what or, you want to be in your sec as your second color, or you're not, or or you're just primary red, and you have a black or blue secondary color where you don't really want to be playing the ingest creatures because your primary aggressive red. This is not a good card. Yeah. Um, take it if it synergizes. Don't take it if it doesn't. Yeah, you have to be ingesting for this card to work because if if this is a dead card in your hand, it's really sad. It's also a sorcery that does five damage to a creature. That's strong, but it's not. It's, like, it's totally it's, okay, broken. Come on. It's roast without the downside. It is. Yeah, it's. <laughs> this is a great card if you can if you can get the yes, out there. This can kill pretty much anything you want it to kill. There's a small setup cost of having things in exile, but that is really. There's a lot of that going around the set. Not in red, but this is a good card for when you're supporting in red. Like, um, I like I said, I think a lot of these decks are going to be playing. Primarily two colors, but they'll splash a third, maybe even a fourth. And just having a processor result in a non-red deck, in a blue-black processor deck, just throwing in processor assault, splashing yeah. for it, it'll uh, it'll work out for you because doing five damage to any creature you want is very nice. Again, yeah. not instant speed, but it doesn't need to be five damage is five damage. And, and, and Rokes was just so powerful. Um, it's it sees. Consistent standard play. Um, and this is Rose with a different downside. i s not s seeing it for limited. This is going to be great in a deck to come play it, and not very few decks can actually play it. Yeah. Um, so, that means if you are in the deck that can play it, you might pick up multiple copies. you got your... to pick eight process yourself. You, you have it made. Yep. Next card, Radiant Flames. This is two... And a red. This is a rare sorcery. It's got converge, the converge mechanic. We haven't seen any in red yet. Uh, converge, it's all about the colors of mana you used to spend to cast the spell. So, in this case, Radiant Flames deals X damage to each creature. 
where x is the number of colors of mana spent to cast Radiant Flames. This is potentially a 3 damage to all creatures, which is pretty darn good. Yes, we have another X spell where we say, how many colors do I need to cast this for before it's good? Mm -hmm. And I think this is good if you're casting it for 2 colors. Yeah, um, and three, so this is three for three mana for two to all creatures is pretty yeah, pretty strong. Pretty strong. You know, I played plenty of Eye Blade Maskers and Origins. I played some Saz Brushers and Dragons. Um, there's all good effects. This is yeah. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be a strong one. Um, I would not first pick this, but probably the right place to take this is between second and third pick. Uh huh. This is a, another card like Processor Assault where this isn't going into a main red deck. This is going into a deck with other colors and you're splashing red for effects like Radiant Flames because uh, three mana board wipe, potentially a board wipe, is quite strong. Uh, there's possible plays where you attack. You maybe you know your creatures are going to die so you attack with all of them. They block with something with four toughness. You put it within range of this card, and you play it main phase two. This is a nice card, and you're going to get a lot of value out of it. So pick it pretty highly. You even first pick it if there's nothing yeah. you see better than it, because this card will be pretty consistent for yeah. you. Yeah, I said second or third pick, because I'm not particularly happy, I don't think, taking this first pick. But that still means it's first pickable. Yeah. Just nothing else is more first pickable. Yeah. Um, I'll take out number over this card. Yeah. For sure. Okay, next card we have Reckless Cohort. Colorless and a red. This is a 2-2, two, two, so that's bare body. Mm -hmm. This is a human warrior ally. Uh, this is a common. Uh, Reckless Cohort attacks each combat if able, unless you control another ally. So... It's got a cute flavor, but ultimately this is just a bear that triggers rally for you. Yeah, this is a this is has some of my favorite flavor text in the set. Um, but this is a bear with downside. It can trigger ally. It can trigger rally. Um, it's not going to be a good creature when you play it. There are going to be better creatures you can play to trigger rally. Yeah, I don't want to play this card. No, you probably don't. It'll end up in your deck, though, because <laughs> draft isn't always work out the way you want it to, and sometimes you need playables. A bear is fine. Uh, anyone who played with Majoring Bully knows that it's yeah. decent. This doesn't pump itself with prowess like Majoring Bully could, but it's still fine. And yeah, the flavor text is really, really quite good. I think all of uh, Battle for Syndicar has some really interesting flavor text. Uh, mm -hmm. across the board. I mean, it's very apocalyptic, really cool stuff. Um, yeah, go ahead and just look at these cards in the flavor text sometime, and I think it's a pretty pretty good use of your time, right? Yeah. Uh, they clearly put a lot of work into the set, and it's looking nice. Good Indeed. job, everyone. Yes, we're all so proud of everyone. Everyone's so cool and good and smart. And next card. I love everybody at Wizards of the Coast. Yes. They can do no wrong, and I will defend that statement until the bitter blossom <laughs> reprint. <laughs> uh, boy, we're just having fun, guys. We're just having fun. Next card is Retreat to Valakut. This Valakut. I don't know. Valakut. Uh, two colorless and a red. This is an enchantment. It is uncommon. It's got landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you choose one. Target creature gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn, or target creature can't block this turn. Yes. So three mana enchantments that don't impact the board are going to be difficult to find a spot for in a aggressive red deck, and this the effects are specifically aggressive. You know, they're not going to. It's these only help you when you're attacking. But these are pretty good effects for when you're attacking. Yeah. yeah plus two, plus zero makes it so that you're. You know, your 2-2 bear that is that your opponent thinks they blanked now attacks for 4 every turn. And that's that's a pretty big deal because they'll trade up eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this that's just enough of an effect for me to, to play one of them. And, uh, you know, if you have this on the field and it's pretty late in the game, you have a pretty big creature, you can make something of theirs 
can't block and suddenly they have to make bad trades uh, just to keep from being beaten down. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd pick this very highly because... No, probably not. A three-drop enchantment in aggro, it's just not what you want to be doing. But um, if it's on the field and you didn't take too much of a, a beating for playing it, then it'll help you get back to where you want to be. Yeah, ideally, this would be in play on turn four, so you can play a land immediately afterwards um, and get some kind of effect at least, so you're not just tapping out and doing nothing to affect the board state. Um, there's going to be better things you can do in turn four. More aggressive things to do in turn four. This is so fun. Yeah. Put one in your deck. Don't pick it too highly because there's going to be other cards you want in red or any other color. But it's okay. It is okay to pick this card. You won't feel terrible about it, but you're not going to think, oh, this draft's in the bag because I have a retreat to Valakut. That's just not, uh, not how it's going to go. Sorry. Next card. Up next, we have Rolling Thunder. Mm. Two red and X. This is an uncommon sorcery. Rolling Thunder deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of creatures or players. Target creatures or players. Um, pretty nice. Yeah, so when this card spoiled, people were saying that Rolling Thunder was one of the best limited cards ever printed. Um, I personally never play with it. But I believe them. This is most likely going to be a two for one when you play it. Um, it also can just you can just also tap out and do some leftover damage to the target player. Yeah. Um, this is you know first pick it. Yeah, and then you know you draw this card, turn eight. You've got potentially up to five damage on the board with this card. You know seven mana. You got two red. Tap for five. You can blow up creatures, and then there's no waste because any extra damage goes to the the player that you choose. So, uh, And sometimes this could just be a burn spell to end the game. Really late, you can do X damage to a player, mm -hmm. and that's really solid. This card is flexible, and flexibility makes cards consistent and makes them reliable. And Rolling Thunder is both of those things. This is a very good card to pick. Pick it really highly. This will put you into red, because it's a double red cost, but I think if you have Rolling Thunder, you're going to be happy being in red. Yep. This is everything that a red deck wants. It eliminates the early blockers your opponent has. It can. It's a burn spell. It can two for one. Yeah. There we go. It's a uh, really high value. All right, next card. Sort of similar, but also different. This is Serpentine Spike. It is... Five and two red. It is a total of seven mana. This is a sorcery. This is a rare. It's devoid. Serpentine Spike deals two damage to target creature, three damage to another target creature, and four damage to a third target creature. If a creature dealt damage this way would die this turn, exile it instead. So sadly none of those say target player. Yeah, none of them target the player. Uh, you can't double up. I don't think you can do, you know, it does 9 damage total, but you can't do 9 damage to one thing. You have to spread it out. I think that's what another target I necessitates. I think you're right, but I have to call Judge over for that. Judge! Judge! Um, so, yes, our assumption is that this card, you have to split it up, which means that uh, if they don't have three creatures on the board that are perfectly lined up, two, three, and four, that this card won't always be efficient, and at seven mana, you're kind of hoping this card's going to be efficient. Yes, it exiles things, yes, it fuels processing, or the processors doing their thing, but on its own, well, I, you cannot discount the fact that this could be a three for one, and that in most cases it'll probably end up being a two for one. Mm -hmm. uh, you but, can deal two damage to your own three three, and then if they only have two creatures on the board, say okay, deal three damage to this one and four damage to this one. Yeah, I kind of unsure if you need to do all the damage in order the way it works. I think you do. Yeah, uh, this is just such a tricky card, and it's seven mana at sorcery speed. It's just really yeah. This is this is 
I don't know. I'm not first picking this card. It'll be really effective when you play it. There's going to be a lot of bitter grapes about, oh, I bet that card's not good. I don't want to play it. And then it does huge damage to me. And then I'm like, rawr, rawr, rawr. this is the kind of card that I'm going to see cast once and be like, oh, wait, yeah, this is actually great. Never mind. <laughs> and, but right now, I feel like this is a little bit overcosted. You know, seven mana red spells are always a tricky proposition. Not want to be getting up to seven lands in a aggressive red deck like that. You know, your opponent probably has something with five toughness some more by turn seven, or you can, you can assume they do. They won't always, but um, it's very very easy to draw this card and say, "Oh, I got my seven mana rare," but I'm still losing the game. Yeah. Um, it's it, you don't want this card in your opening hand because it's just going to be one less card you get to use for turn after turn after turn for a while. Uh, this is a Devoid card, which means it's probably going to find a place in an Eldrazi. It's, it's your Eldrazi with Kozlov's Chandler. Yeah, it certainly <laughs> does. Um, this, I think this is going to do better than we think it will. Yeah. I mean, is... it's always going to do okay when you cast it. Just getting to the point of casting it, we, we aren't sure if that's possible yet. Yeah. It, will, it will be possible. We're not sure how consistent it's going to be yet. Uh, definitely... I'm thinking it's pretty early, though. I'm yeah, still yeah, gonna... yeah. Definitely don't pass it if there's nothing better. Yeah, this is a tricky one to evaluate. I might first pick this. I, I have to see somebody else cast it first before I really can tell how good it how good it is in a typical board state. Um, but I would. Yeah, okay, so I go through. I go through bombs. I'd say are there any bombs? I don't consider this a bomb. I then go through premium removal. Is there a premium renewal? Is there an outnumber in this set in this pack? Is there a safe snare? If there isn't, then I move on to cards like this, or you know, cards like a Jazzy Sky Spawner, and I still take the good, cheaply costed creatures over this because those are consistent and reliable. Yes. And then once you get past the Eldrazi Sky Spawner uh, type of cards, then I go to these ones. So yeah. this ends up this in a typical pack. I would probably take this. You know, fourth or so. Yeah. Um, but, you know what? Prove us wrong, everyone. Uh, or don't, because then we're right. So, that's cool, too. Yeah, this is a card I know I'm going to be proved wrong about. Yeah. I, I just know that <laughs> I'm going to listen to this, you know, halfway through the set and be like, what am I thinking? This is a three for one. But, yeah. for now... For I'm now, sorry. it's it's too much. It's a sorcery. Yeah. Uh, it's too conditional. Yada, yada, yada. We're... Hey, we're just pros, just like everyone else. Just like everybody here, we're pros. <laughs> Next we have Shatter Skull Recruit. Three colorless, two red. This is a 4-4 four, four giant warrior ally. Ally. It is a common, and it has menace. So this is pretty vanilla. It's 5 for a 4-4 four, four with a really good evasion ability. Yeah, 5, for, five mana for 4-4 four, four menace is something I want to play anyway. Mm -hmm. This has the gravy of triggering any ally effects you have. Yeah. But even if you don't have any ally effects, I still play this. Yep. Um, yeah, play this in any red deck you have. It doesn't matter if it's ally or not. 5 for a 4-4 four, four with menace, that is, that's where you want to be on curve. You want to drop a significant threat like this on turn 5. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really good, and because it's vanilla, there isn't a lot to talk about with it. It's just really good. Yeah. It's also common, so you're going to be seeing more of these than you want to see if you're not in red, and if you are in red, you'll be happy because people that aren't in red will pass these to you, uh, and you will be happy about it. Happy, happy, happy. Next card. Stone Fury. Three and two red. This is an instant. It is common. Stone Fury deals damage to target creature, creatures only, equal to the number of lands you control. Uh, at the time you cast this, this is going to do 5 damage to a creature at instant speed, and it really only goes up from there. Yep, unless you're ramping out with Scions, and there's no Scions in red. This is going to be cast for turn five, for 5 damage at the minimum. It's an instant, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't hit players, but hit if it players. did, it would probably be way too good. It would be Sarkin's Rage without the downside. Five, five for uh, five for removal. That's pretty much what we get a lot of the time. It's like uh, basically this is like an unholy hunger type card where it's just you're paying five, you're killing a creature at instant speed. And this act, this can go bigger than five too. True, you can cast this for six seven. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, this is first pickable. Mm-hmm. Um, I would re- I would rate this below outnumber just in terms of red removal. One mana cost versus five is yes. pretty significant. But yeah, this is this is still good still removal. Very good removal. You want good removal? Yes, limited. Well, specifically drafts. I'm not as familiar with sealed, but specifically drafts removal is such a premium. Uh, that's how you. Don't lose. You win with your creatures, you don't lose with your removal. Uh, so, this card will help you not lose, which other people might consider winning. I like not losing. Yes. Uh, yeah, Stone Fury is good. Uh, well, wh- where do we say we want to pick this? Okay, so I don't think I first pick so- uh, Stone Fury because it doesn't hit players. Mm-hmm. It's a bit over for not hitting players. Um, you know, if we compare it to something like Sarkis Rage from Dragon Star here, which was great because it was a five mana burn spell, and I could just really take your opponents by surprise or yeah, put them in I, bad situations. I certainly lost to that card a couple times. Yeah, um, but even though it's not tier one red removal, it's tier two red removal, and tier two red removal is so good at removal. Yep. So, so the, there first, are situations where you will pick this first. It'll go in the top in the top few cards of every pack. Mm-hmm. It's also a great sign that red is open because uh, removal like that is just uh, you don't pass it up for much. That's for true. For true. Next card we have. Oh, sorry about that. Next card we have Sure Strike. This is a colorless and a red. This is an instant. It's a common. Target creature gets plus three plus zero and gains first strike until end of turn. This is a cute little combat trick that will, I think, pretty much every time be a one for one this card for the creature that blocked or that you're blocking. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're going just trying to push through damage, three damage for two mana is that's pretty fair. That's your lightning strikes. Yeah, so like the art depicts, this allows you to trade. Way up. Uh, you, know, you can have a little <laughs> goblin uh, striking through. A uh, big crab like Eldrazi thingy. Yeah. Um, you, you always have to risk, you always risk being two for one with pump spells like this. Um, you can probably cast this more often when you're attacking than when you're blocking. Um, but it's still pretty good. It trades up. It can, I guess, pump your creature by three if you. Why again? This is a lot more damage. Um, it's a solid card. Uh, yeah. It's not something I first pick. It's something I'll go probably in the top half of the deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's also no prowess card whatsoever in Battle for Zendikar. Yeah. So this card, it I bet it's just a three zero and first strike until end turn. It's it's good. It's essentially you can think of it as removal. Uh, that's what it will end up doing a lot of the time, is just being a removal spell that comes attached to combat. Which is much worse than a typical removal spell. Yes, that is, but. that's true. Because typical removal spells you can use and then go into combat and get through. But, uh, I would happily have a couple of these in a more aggro slanted deck, like an ally type deck, or a landfall type deck. I mean, playing this on your, uh, McKindy... The trampling to one landfaller mm-hmm. that'll push through three damage first strike with trample so good yeah one this or two first is... strike this first strike and double strike standardize very well with trample mm-hmm. um, yeah so this is this is a pretty high pick not first pick because it's it really it's like a tier three removal if we want to even call it that um, it's not a bomb it's not going to win you the game on its own but it will. Uh, make what you have better. So it is still a good card that will find its place in red decks and probably also white decks that are playing red. Yeah. Any aggressive deck, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure Strike is a sure pick. <laughs> <laughs> Next card is Twitch of the Void. It's a two colorless, one red. This is a sorcery. It is at common... Devoid. Touch of the Void deals 3 damage to target creature or player. If a creature dealt damage this way would die this turn, exile it instead. So Touch of the Void um, also has players. 
and mm-hmm. that's, and it would exile yeah, them yeah. if they lose. Yes. So just get the fuck out of my little game shop. <laughs> yes, you you get to banish them from your store forever You're if not you finish them anymore. with Touch of the Void. Yes. Um, so Touch of the Void is I very efficiently cost a card three damn three. Well, for, for limited. For limited, yes. Okay, this is not going to be making waves in modern. Um, or even standard, or probably. Even standard. Um, but three damage to a creature or a player, and player is pretty important here. Mm-hmm. It's not going to get blanked at the end of the game. Yep. Um, for three mana is really what I want. I think this is a, this is a tier one removal spell. It is a sorcery speed, which is a little sad, but I think uh, we aren't getting lightning bolts anymore. We have to kind of be happy that we're getting... Any removal at all, and I think the way it's been going is we get a bunch of removal options. Like, we have this, and we have Processor Assault, and we have Outnumber, and Stone Fury, and they all... None of them are, like, so good on their own that they're better than all the other ones. Each one's kind of its own flavor. I think that's really cool. Um, It certainly makes for interesting limited gameplay. So Touch of the Void is definitely a high pick. It's... Potentially first pickable if there's no bombs, because this is, as you said, tier one removal. This will... This is tier one common removal, let me clarify that. Yes. This is not as good as Stasis Snare or Ruinous Path or anything like that. Yeah. But this is, uh, you know, if you have to choose between this and Outnumber, you'll probably take the Outnumber, but this is still a strong consideration. You might have to think about it, because... Uh, another thing, this card just has the upside of exiling creatures you destroy with it. So it's just got that little extra... For all the processors out there, um, and that's that's cool too. So it's a neat card. Touch of the void, a pretty yep. high pick. Uh, pick it, go into red. If you see it, it means red's probably open. Okay. Yep. Next card, tunneling geopede. Two and a red. This is a three-two insect creature. It is at uncommon. It has the landfall trigger. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, Tunneling Geo deals one damage to each opponent. Uh, this is a really cool aggro card. Mm-hmm. So we talked about um, Aquam Hellkite earlier, which was a six-mana spell that could do the same thing. When you play a land, does one damage to target cre- to target target player. Creature um, or player. Um, really usually player. player, yes. Um, this is that effect, but on a three-mana body, and a Pretty efficiently cost a three mana. Yeah, three two. for a three two. Yeah. That's that's fine. very aggressive. I'm fine with that. Um, and you, there's a pretty big difference between this effect at three mana and this effect at six mana. I like this effect a lot more on Tiny GOP than I do on a cool. Okay. Yeah, I mean, whenever you're playing a land for the rest of the game, you're just doing one extra damage. And if you're an aggro deck and you're just trying to do as much damage as fast as possible, that extra. Damage a turn for the next couple turns might help you finish the game when things start to stabilize for your opponents. Yeah. So this, yeah, this is going to go in almost in any landfall deck that I can have. I'm going to be putting this. There's no cap on this card. I'm not going to. This it works even better in multiples. Yep. Multiple copies of this card are great. Um, triggering landfall multiple times with this card is great. Mm-hmm. This is. Uh, I mean, this is this is just such a good card. Three for a three-two. That's already just nice. I like the body. I like the landfall ability. It's uncommon, which means you're not going to be seeing these every single game you play. But there will be a couple, and they will be a pretty big headache up against if you're just getting smashed by little creatures and then taking uncounterable damage to the face with uh, lands entering the battlefield. Mm-hmm. So, really good card. Yes. Yeah, if it, the game does go to a board stall state where you can't get any more, it's going to push you to extra damage that you want. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is first pickable necessarily. You need to be already kind of going the landfall route because one damage to the opponent is solid. You'll probably get, I think, like two damage out of this card on average before it gets removed or you have to trade with it. Okay, so what does that we've seen so far actually start pushing you into that landfall from pack from pack one pick one? From pack one yeah. If not telling GOP, then what is it? Uh I well, yeah, see the thing is a lot of these landfall cards are common and aren't common and they're all kind of like, well these do work these well are these with are other landfall cards. Nice bodies that synergize and 
um, aren't extraordinarily powerful, but still very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess, you know, this is uncommon. Scythe is uncommon. Neither of those are really first pick cards. Um, Swell of... Swell of uh, Growth. Swell of Growth is a good card, not really a first pick card. Um, this is... Maybe it might be difficult for you to end up in a landfall dra- landfall deck when drafting. Yeah, you might have to just... Because uh, a lot of decks, you'll see a card that's so good that pushes you right into an archetype. And this the landfall deck might not have that card. It might not have the the hallelujah card that says I'm landfall. So it's going to be up to you, dear oh, you know, listener, we... to determine whether or not you want to push yourself down that path. And landfall cards are really strong. Of course, they're way better with other cards that support it. But I think even on their own, still useful. I mean, you don't have to set up landfall for it to work. You just have to draw and play lands, which every deck does. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know what? The one card we talked about that actually does push you in a laugh always? Which? Undergrowth Champion. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes, so if you start out with a Mythic Rare, then go into Landfall. You've done it. Yep. That's the one card you can pull, and then you'll know, okay, I'm doing Landfall this draft. I'm very happy just picking Landfall cards now. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, Tunneling GOP, pick it pretty highly. Uh, doesn't necessarily matter if you're in landfall because this is still just a value card. But if you are in landfall, it's even better. It's a solid three drop. If you're not in landfall, then it's probably just a three two that trades down and pings it for a little bit extra damage, which is not great, uh, but still playable. Still playable. Yeah. Um, don't leave it around for too long. Pick it up pretty early, and if you already know you're in landfall, pick it up as pretty soon highly. as possible. Yeah. Okay, next card, turn against four and a red. This is a five mana spell. It is an instant. It is an uncommon. It is devoid. And the text on this card (laughs) says, gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. Now, we have seen this card before. It's always at sorcery speed. It always brings things over, and then you have options to sack it or whatnot. This card is different from those cards because it is at instant speed. Yeah. And I've been, you know, thinking about how that could possibly come up and why you'd want to play this card at instant speed. Well, I mean, you steal one of their creatures and block with it. and then Yes, that's that's the application. Um, that's... So, okay, so what that's... That's... In order for that to work, they have to have a big creature that eats one of their other creatures that's also not attacking for some reason. If your opponent's a good player... They won't be playing that creature pre-combat unless it has you know, some ally ability or anything. That's pretty narrow. We're not going to be counting on that for this card. Um, well, even if they attack you with it, you're still untapping the creature you grab. So oh, Can you actually act to create some creatures that are attacking? Yeah, turn against. It's instant. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. There's nothing that says you can't if they're attacking. So that makes sense, but I've had a judge call at probably a pretty not very reputable game shop where they ruled that you couldn't will break her card when it was attacking. Hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, I probably wouldn't trust them, but that's just the impression I've had. It's the impression that I get. Yeah, well, we don't really want to be murky on the rules when we're talking about the set review. I My belief, and this is, I feel like this is the assumption, because there's nothing in the rules text that says otherwise on the card. It just says gain control of target creature until end of turn. I'm going to choose to believe that that is what happens. Right, I'll, I'll agree with you there. So if you go into, they go into declare attackers, they're attacking you with their big, dumb creatures, you can use this card to gain control of one of them, and if they trade for each other, that's just so cool, because that is a two-for-one with this card. Um, yeah, so wait, so yeah. either they trade for each other, and that's awesome, or... You have to use a five mana removal spell on their second best creature, and that's where it starts getting way too overcosted for me. Because um, you have to get you have to gain control of their biggest creature, and have that block your second biggest creature. So it's not it's a five mana removal spell. It's not going to take care of their biggest creature. And oh, by the way, they also have to be blocking. They also have to be attacking with another creature on top of that. Um, this is probably still too overcosted for me. Um, it's you know, active trees and effects are not good on your turn. The blocking scenario just doesn't seem like it'll come up enough. Um, and when it does come up, you're not going to 
be taking care of their best creature. I probably would avoid playing this. I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a little more of a favorable rating. I think that um, you can use this card maybe to push through some damage on your turn. You know, if they have a really big creature, like a Eldrazi. Yeah, we've seen Arctic Trees before. Yeah. Um, but I think this card's more flexible than other Active Trees and type effects. Um, I think having one in your deck won't hurt you, certainly. Um, there's better removal, certainly. This is more tricky, it's got a higher setup cost, but it will still do something for you most of the time you have it. And for that, I'm going to say pick it up middle of the pack, back half of the pack, have one in your deck, I think it'll be okay. All right, and this, the pros are disagreeing here. This is what makes these spoilers so fun to talk about. So controversial. Yes. Uh, Valakut Invoker is the next card. It is two and a red for a 2-3 human shaman, not an ally. Mm -hmm. Don't know why I needed to clarify that. This is common, uh, and like all invokers, it has an Eight colorless tap effect. It doesn't have to be tap, but you pay eight colorless, and Valakut Invoker deals three damage to target creature player. So this is a three drop. That's a two three, which is fine. It's a little on the defensive side. It's not as it's not three two. It's not as aggro. But if you can get to eight mana, suddenly you're doing three damage to a creature player every turn, and that's pretty cool. Okay. So couple problems I see with this card. First off. You're, there's no way for red to ramp in this set. It just, period, it does not ramp. Um, you can pair this with green, and if you're in a landfall deck, then I guess you have some incidental ramp, but it's, but, um, you know, you're really not getting up to the point where you can start um, casting 8 mana lightning bolts. Um, 8 mana for casting a lightning bolt as a repeatable effect. I mean, is the best thing that this card's ever going to be doing. So we have to think of how many Lightning Bolts might be casting with this. Probably um, zero. Would most be... likely zero. Because <laughs> um, you're not ramping. If you are, for some reason, in a green-red ramp deck, um, three... 11 mana for a 2-3 that also casts a Lightning Bolt is still not worth it. Mm. So you have to be activating this multiple times in order for it to really be getting the value that you want. But that's tricky because by the time you have 8 mana, your opponent should have a round there and you're both beating each other down with your biggest creatures yeah. and removal spells. This card isn't going to do much for you ever. Uh, we also talked about there was the Invoker in green. I cannot remember yes. its name that had the tap 8 effect give itself plus 5, plus 5, and trample. Which is, I think, better than this effect. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in pretty much most cases. It's, it's really just the fact that it's in green, where it has a lot of ramp available to it, instead mm -hmm. of red, with zero ramp available to it. Yeah. Um, Valakut Invoker is not a good card. I don't really want this You'll, in my deck. You might end up with one in your deck, but these are going to go really late. They're not, uh, they're not a signal if you see one. Because the red player is picking anything they can over this. They might even be going into their second color over this card. This will probably make its way into a lot of steel pools just because it's a okay caustic creature with some upside um, that can fill up the last few spots. Because if you're in sealed, then you probably don't have exactly like the 23 cards that you're really happy to play. Yeah. Yep. Valakut Invoker, not great. Not great. Valakut Predator, on the other hand, is our next card. It's a two colorless red uh, for a 2 2 elemental. This is a common. It has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, it gets. Well, Valakut Predator gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So yes. this is a three mana, four, four, pretty much every time Which, you're attacking with it. Yes. There's just so many. We keep seeing all these uh, very efficiently costed yep. landfall creatures. These um, cheap landfall creatures that can really be. Very aggressive. And this is also a common. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to want these in every single landfall deck you play. Yep. Um, I really I really like this. I would say it's probably slightly weaker than the other common landfall creatures we've seen. It doesn't have trample, so it can't push that damage through. It's not cheap enough to 
consistently get a lot of damage through. And in most of the cases, this card's going to be blocked, I think. They're going to be blocking it, or they're going to be removing it. I think they're definitely taking damage on turn four. There's not really much that they want to trade for it. Um, it's really just, if you start running out of land, then this is a bad blocker. Yeah. This is a three-man C2 if you don't have any land to play. Yeah. Uh, that's the kind of, the whole thing with landfall is it's, a, it's as good as however many lands you draw. Yep. And, and, uh, yeah. Hope you draw a lot of land. Yep. It's a pretty, pretty high pick in the landfall deck. It's not going to be first picked ever. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you will be competing for that card if you are one of the few landfall drafters in your pod. Yep. Agreed. Next card. Vestige of Emrakul. The only Emrakul themed card in this set. Uh, three colorless and a red. This is a 3-4 four for four. It is devoid. It is an Eldrazi drone. It is a common and is a trampling creature. It has trample. Yes, so it's a basically a vanilla creature. 3-4 four for four with trample. And that's a very good vanilla creature. Yep. I will go in every single red deck I play. Yep. It's just, so, it's just costed well. Yep. It's splashable too. It's... Only got one red in its cost. I mean, this isn't the type of card you'd splash for, but if you... It's it's easy to cast without having a bunch of mountains in your deck. Yeah. Uh, you can be primary green or something and still be able to play this card every time. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm happy, it's, happy to play this in every red deck I have. Yeah, it's a pretty high pick. It's not, a, again, it's not a first pick because it's not going to win you the game on its own. It's not removal, but it is a big, beefy creature with trample. And that is darn good. Agreed. Cool. Next card. Vile Aggregate. Two colorless, one red. This is a star five. I think that's how you say it, star. Whatever. It's a star five Eldrazi drone. Wild card. It's uncommon. <laughs> it's got devoid because it's an Eldrazi. Vile Aggregate's power is equal to the number of colorless creatures you control. Good so far. I mean, that's fine so far. Three for a something five. Mm -hmm. Good. Its power is it's already a 1-5 when it enters play. Now, it also has Trample and Ingest. So Red does have an Ingester, and it's actually one of the best Ingesters um, in the set. Mm -hmm. Because Vile Aggregate, three mana for, let's say, X5 and X... Is always one, but it could be, you know, two or three or more than that. <laughs> if you have a From Beyond in play, suddenly uh, this card, those vile aggregates, pretty big. I, Five it... toughness on a three drop in red that has trample and the potential to have a really big power, and it has ingest to set up processor stuff. This card is very good. And I might be overrating it, but I think this is a card you will want to pick very highly. So, when you look at a card like this, you have to think, how many creatures on the battlefield do I need before this, is a ba before this becomes a good card? Um, if you only ever have this in the battlefield, it's a 1-mana, one 1-5 one trample, and that's not a good card. For 3-mana, three, for three it's not a good card. If you have one other creature on the battlefield, now it's a 2-5 trample, and that's actually pretty good. That's that's very that's very undercosted. Um, so I think yes, if you can consistently get one other creature on the battlefield, which every single limited deck you play should be able to do, then this is going to be just a good body. Mm -hmm. Now then we get into the ingest energy, and we saw I guess you know maybe cards you in red that has ingest energy, but there's processor assault. Processor assault. Uh, I think I don't know. There's other cards that exile things like the tentacle spell that we. We're so, underrating. So mostly this is going to be supporting cards in another color. Mm -hmm. um, Colors that have a lot of Eldrazi creatures. Yeah, so a blue blue or black. This is, goes well in a blue or black deck. Yeah. Um, and it goes really well in those decks. I would be hesitant about first picking this just because this doesn't go in every single red deck you want to play. Uh, you really want to be first picking cards that span multiple archetypes. Um, I think this is an acceptable pack two pick one. If you know, if you know you're already in either if you in blue or black, maybe considering going red, this is a card you want to be playing definitely. Um, 
But the fact that it's most set, it's essentially a goal card keeps me from wanting to pack one pick on this. Yeah, but I I probably would because I just. I see a card like this, and it makes me think that the dream is alive, that I'm going to be drafting the really wide Eldrazi deck that ingests and processes and just uh, wins like that. It's I think it's a high pick. Maybe not pick one, because I'm, I'm not that naive, but... I think it's a I think it's a pretty good card. Yeah, this is a very strong card. I'm happy getting this, you know. I mean, the five toughness just puts it out of range of so much removal too. This is such a tricky card for turn three. It's it's just great. You have a let's say you have a two drop colorless in play. You have your mist intruder, mist invader, whatever the frig it's called. Uh, you play vile aggregate, turn three, turn four. You drop an Eldrazi sky spawner or a four drop that puts tokens into play, and suddenly. You've got a 4-5 Trampler with Ingest. So, I don't think that blue is really the go-wide color. I mean, you're not going to be really just dropping a bunch of those blue creatures and going aggro at your opponent. And you can if you get a bunch of those Sky Spawners. But this the, this go-wide effect is really best in either red or white. And neither of those have any Ingest energy. And so this is still a fine card if you're going red or white because you're going to have a Trampler that has a decent amount of power and 5 Toughness. Well, it's but a little trickier in white, because white doesn't have any colorless synergy. Yeah, so don't... Oh, it's the only number of colorless card creatures you control. Yeah. That makes it a lot different. Yeah. This oh, is that's, a, that's, yeah, it's different then. This is okay. the Eldrazi... This is not a first pick card. This is a synergy card, but a very powerful synergy card. Um, something that you want to probably second through fourth pick. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'll co-sign that. Second through fourth pick. Uh, good sign that, well, it's not a good sign that anything's open, because this card's just powerful in pretty much any color that plays Eldrazi. They'll splash for this card, because it will help win them the game. Uh, I see a couple of these uh, Carlos Creatures Matter cards in red. I guess not quite enough. I, just, I don't know if there are those synergies in other colors. Um, the only one we haven't talked about yet is black. I haven't seen them in any of the other colors yet. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be a deck where colors creatures matter. Yeah, we'll see. We will see. We will see in our set review of black. <laughs> Next card. Oh, I mentioned we'll come to this card earlier. Of course, it's the second to last card. So mm-hmm. Here we are. This is Volcanic Upheaval. This is three colorless and a red. This is a common instant that destroys target land. Now, we talked about this in green... Every set has a four converted mana cost sorcery spell that destroys lands, artifacts, enchantments, and they're all mediocre. The difference with this card is that it has instant. And the thing is, that four mana sorcery that does all those things, that's fair. That's what we've Wizards has decided is fair. I think at three mana that card becomes so much better at sorcery, or at instant that card becomes so much better. And not in other formats, but in Battle for Zendikar Limited, Volcanic Upheaval is a really solid sideboard card that you will be happy to side in against the Awakened deck because this destroys the land they're targeting with Awakened because it has instant speed. At sorcery speed, you're already taking the damage from the Awakened creature because it has haste and you weren't able to do anything in in reaction, but this is a reaction card. This destroys a land... Yes, you have to leave four mana up, but by the time Awaken is coming online, that's five or six, you can pass the turn with mana up at that point. I mean, or you don't even need to leave mana up and just destroy the next turn, because it's still, it's still a land. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this has never been main decked, ever. Um, this is just not a good effect in the main board. But I think this card is good enough that ironically... Well, not ironically, just a lot of the times a sideboard card is like a, well... I guess this can go on my sideboard if I need it. It's You're reluctant to pick it. I would pick this highly because you want one in your sideboard. So I don't actually see very many lands being awakened in a typical li- li- uh, limited game. Every awakened spell is essentially a two-for-one. It gives you a massive advantage on a board and should close out the game uh, fairly soon. Um, this is So when, when you have not very many targets for this volcanic upheaval, um, that's, you know, still trading one for one, essentially. Um, yeah, this, it's just, it's not a particularly good effect when you're already very much down and still losing the tempo. Um, this is a card that 
only really works when you're losing. Um, yeah, I, this is it works in the sideboard, I guess. It's a four mana removal spell on your sideboard. That for a, a very four land creatures. Yes, yes, very conditional removal spell. But if you're playing against a deck that has land creatures in it, put this in your main deck, and you're going to be happy. But keep it in your sideboard until you see the whites of their eyes. Basically, yes. Um, but I still think it's worth, you want at least one of these, because you will run into a deck with man lands or awakened lands, and then you're going to wish you had it. I wouldn't take this over a creature I'm actually excited about playing. Yeah. Or like, you know, a creature that enables the synergies, or basically an any synergy card is to make my deck good, game one. Um, if you, once you get down to the, you know, like, the under-costed, the, I mean, the over-costed creatures, or the... Ones that don't really enable your potential synergy or other mediocre sideboard cards, yeah, probably take, can take this. Yep. So it's a lower priority pick, but something you won't be unhappy to pick and put in your sideboard. It's not a junk card, even though it's a four mana land destruction spell. It's at an instant and thus has uh, some useful applications. Sure. All right. That resolves. Moving on. Sure. Last card in red. We've got one of the coolest cards, I think, in Battle for Zendikar. We have Zada, Hedron Grinder. Uh, three colorless and a red. This is a 3-3 three, three legendary creature. It is a goblin ally. Ally. At rare. Oh, that was excruciating. <laughs> uh, this is a 4-drop. It's a 3-3 goblin ally. It's legendary. It's rare. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Zada, Hedron Grinder, copy that spell for each other creature you control that that spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. So, you have Zada in play. You have three other creatures. You use a pump spell on Zada. You've just efficiently made a pump spell on all of your creatures. This is a finisher. This is super cool in limited. And probably not not as good in limited as it would be in standard where you can build around this card. I think it will see standard play because this effect is really neat. Um, if you can be drawing a card for each creature you control with like a defiant strike, say, that's good. It's four-costed. It's an ally. There's a lot of synergy there. Uh, I think this is a really good card and it's totally worth first picking. So in red, you don't really have very much that would synergize with this. And if you have nothing to synergize with this, this is a hill giant, vanilla hill giant. Now you have a you have surge strike in red, um, but, but this is obviously this is obviously a great effect. Without it, if you can cast that now twice, it's already a good card. You cast that twice is great. It um, is a uh, an ally though, which means that it's not going to be in a mono red deck. It's going to be in a red plus another color. Yeah. So. This synergizes well with the green pump spells. There's some white pump spells, um, probably in a white red um, ally deck. I don't think I'd first pick this card because it just relies on. It's too conditional. You have to have both a few creatures on the board and have a pump spell in your hand that can target Zada. And you have to be able to untap with that so the Zada can also attack and you're not just wasting a spell. Um, well, that's definitely the spike perspective. If you open this, and you're like me, and you see the word legendary, and you see the creature type goblin, you're going to pick it. I can't argue with that. <laughs> yeah, so Zada, you know, completely unplayable once later. Nothing, nothing good will ever be made with that. Um, uh... I'm, I'm joking, but... Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a very powerful effect when it gets when you get to go off with it. There is a I'm high not, ceiling on this yes. card. I, you know, I'd rather pick something that you'll be able to have a powerful effect every single turn with, like Stone Fury, uh, Rolling Thunder, you know, it's just like so removal or a creature that's very strong on its own um, or very stronger in the ally deck, like you call him Stonewalker. Um, yeah, this is a, it's a good card. You really need the synergy. The synergy is an existing red. It's going to lock you in to specific synergies very, um, for, if you take this pack one, and every, you won't be able to go off with it every time you play it, 
Yeah. It's a good card. It's not something that I'd first pick. Yeah. Uh, and so it's one of the first picks, though. It's definitely not always going to be your first it's, pick. It's top, you know, five. Um, but, you know, if you want this card, there's no problem in taking it first. It's still going to be fine. Even at its worst, it's four for a 3-3, three, three, which is... I mean, that's it's not exciting, but that's fine. And then if you get a pump spell over the course of the three packs that you're working through, then... You really have to have multiple pump spells also. Yeah. Well, you need a couple. Just, I mean, if you play at least one pump spell with this, yeah. it's already... Yeah, you have to you know, ensure you actually have both those in, your sa- in the same hand, though. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's a good card. It triggers Rally. It's an ally... I'd pick a top five in a pack. Yeah. In a pack. It's... Uh, I just... I have such a hard time not picking Legendary. Imagine the massive swing that can be made... Massive swing combo that can be made with this card. Yeah. Um, I think our listeners will probably pick this pretty highly. I'll probably pick it pretty highly. It depends on just how but cool if, you want your games to be. Yeah. If you want just hyper-efficiency, then you're going to be like... Well, I can't trigger this every single time I play it, and my don't say hill giant. And if you want to win with style, then you're going to be picking first, uh, first picking Zada, and then you're casting sure strike, and suddenly everything gets plus three plus one first strike, and yeah. So uh, it's up to you. It depends. Yeah, you know this card's not going to be bad for you certainly, and you'll, yeah. you you it's can, still an acceptable body. Yeah, and you can put it in a standard deck, and that's fun too. Um, but I think uh, I think. Sure, don't you don't have to pick it first if you don't want to. I probably will. No shame. You know? That's why we're pros. That's why we're pros, because we're able to choose when we want to pick something first. <laughs> uh yeah, so that's that's red. Yeah. Um I I like red more than I thought it would. Um, you know, coming off some sets where red was you know, I thought red was the best color in Dragon Stark here, and I thought it was the second best color in Magic Origins. I've been just you know, going wide and aggressive for the past long time drafting, um, and this is not quite as powerful as those was as those were. I but still I th- think the the general power level in this set for red is it's not bad. It's not bad. It's probably average to slightly below average, which you know is still perfectly draftable. Um, I look forward to the landfall that can be here. I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing with that. Um, I think it's even though if, even if red's not one of the best colors, I think. Landfall is probably one of the best archetypes that you can, that's going to be in the set. Mm-hmm. Um, anything fast, anything that wins the game fast is going to be better than something that wins the game slow. Because things that win well, the game fast win before. Either way, you're winning the game. <laughs> yes. But if you win the game first, then that's that's great. <laughs> yeah. There's a few colorless matter cards in red that I'm not sure will be an archetype on, the, on itself. Um, and don't really synergize out of what red's doing. But for the most part, any given red card you have in a pack will synergize with any other given red card you have in a pack. So it's a good choice for purely sealed or a PBTQ. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, that is our site review for red. Uh, join us next time when we'll be looking at the black cards. Yes. Well, this was the Magic Pro, the pro show. This was the pro show with Colin and Jacob. I'm Colin. I'm Jacob. And we're signing out. Bye.